Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to be uh, continuing some of our landscape studies. I told you we were going to continue some of the a la prima, which is the, you know, try to do it in one setting. I'm going to try to do this in one setting today. It's late in the afternoon, so I might have to finish it up tomorrow morning. But uh, we're going to uh, start some of that uh, Richard Smith, that, that uh, Grand Manor style that I've been promising you, you know, how to do it. We're going to be doing it with acrylic, so we'll do it slightly different. It's all based on tone, color tones, and basically optical effects. So uh, we'll take a look at that, okay? And so what I have here is a board. It's about uh, 24 inches here this way. And I think it's like 16 inches or so this way. This is a photo that I have over here of a beautiful, it was up on, the, there's a wonderful Facebook page called Abandoned Nebraska. And it just shows old buildings, old barns, everything, everywhere across Nebraska. And uh, I came across that one and I just absolutely loved it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it in the Grand Manor style uh, of this barn. And normally Richard Smith would, would draw you in and then put it in a little bit smaller back here and create more, basically more more negative space but I have quite a few people that just love that barn in that size so I don't want to make it too small you can make it a little bit smaller and go a little closer to that grand manor style if you want and uh, so uh, it's going to be these nice warmer you see it over there these warmer fall colors uh, so we'll have a good time with that the palette that I'm going to be using here the colors this is my normal color palette I list all the colors in the uh, video description below so you'll find all of those I'm going to add two colors out of the uh, line today one is right over here the English red oxide this is a pure pigment it's an English red oxide is a PR 101 uh, it's known in some lines as Venetian red red earth uh, it's a, a beautiful uh, toned kind of red orange and it just matches really nice some of that barn color there so I can uh, use that in conjunction with some blues and some of my greens to really create the, the nice tonal effect that I want to have to my colors. I'm also adding sapphire blue. You've seen me add this several times on uh, landscapes and I do it anytime that I really want to make a lot of grays because sapphire is a combination of black and white, thetal blue and ultramarine blue. It's a premixed color. You can see all of their their color working numbers right down through here. So it is a, a mixed color and uh, it's just a nice shortcut color, okay? All right, let's get into this. I'm gonna be using my fusion brushes and I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you about drawing in here in just a second. We'll start by making just a real nice gray. I have out here a, a, a cap full of extender medium. This helps me this uh, extender medium helps me uh, thin out the colors, but it also really slows down the drying. And then I also have out here the open medium. This is the Matisse open medium that works very, very well with our paints. And uh, it's designed to work with our paints too. So it is uh, just a fantastic medium. Keeps the paint thicker, dries as slow as well. So I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to make my background sky over here and I'm gonna kind of wash that in. I want it to gray down. I'm gonna make some beautiful grays today off of my, my uh, blues and my English red oxide. I love these types of gray colors here. If I want it warmer, I could add a little bit of green to it. Uh, if I want it to be cooler, I can keep it onto the blue side or violet side. And I want to get these grays. Now, so this gray here is a little bit to the violet side. Here it's a little bit to the yellow side. So let's take it just a touch to the yellow side here and lighten it up here. And we should get pretty darn close. There we go. Pretty darn close to that particular color. I will add some... Uh, extender medium to it here here we go just like that and off we go so i'll come back up here this is my wide two inch brush and i'll put this this will be the basis for our gray sky here and i'm going to carry it down even though i'll put trees and stuff through here we want to be able to always oh, got to kind of plan ahead a little bit for sky holes those are the areas between the trees and then i'm just going to drag a little bit of the color through here just hit it every once in a while here and this is and most of this will cover up but it's just marks of harmony i'm always thinking of harmony 
which is making your colors relate together. You try to do that. Now I'll wipe down just a bit so I can see my sketch. Those of you that are, you know, in the memberships and stuff, I'll put a, a uh, you know, the photos and stuff that you can take the sketches and stuff off of the, the barn and stuff here. So you'll, you'll have those. Now I'm going to leave it a little bit heavier up there, softer down through here. You see my, um, my, uh, the barn, you know, easily, not, not tremendously, but easily through there. Now let's talk about what is le leading in. So I'm just going to push this. I'm not even going to clean out my brush. I'll push a little more extender into it here and just set it off to the side. That will stay for a number of hours like that, just nice and, uh, and wet. So you don't have to worry about it. Now, I'm going to come in and work some more colors. What is leading in? Leading in means that you're, you know, you're going to work with the tones of color and contrast edges and bring a viewer into the particular painting. And he has a, a great look. As a matter of fact, let me grab this right up here. It's, uh, I like to print off every once in a while a few of his photos. This is one. Of course, he's going to be quite a bit smaller. But see how he keeps the, the foreground here very simplistic and draws the viewer into the painting. It was a beautiful style that he created uh, that was just magical. I'll put that up over here so I can reference that every once in a while. But you'll notice there's a lot of contrast and dark. So that's where I want to start. So I'm, I want to get some nice darks in and around even though it's fall when you look at this particular photo here you're going to have some of your darks these are real darks but i want them to play against darker darker colors here so you can see this is a cooler side this side over here is the warm side this is the cooler side but you can see that coolness come through here and the warmth come up through here on this particular photo so i want to start right in here and i want to find those real core darks those passages are real dark but i don't want them to be too cool yet so i'll make them from the pine green which is warm and the burnt sienna which is warm and i'm just going to come right in here like this and this is the way i love to start a, a plain air and especially if i'm going to do uh, smith's grand manor style i love to get those those real core darks in there like that let's put just a touch of blue in which is going to darken that just a bit more and we'll play that real dark right up through here now and I'll play these colors I want some of these colors to uh, move up here through the painting so I'll push that on now I'm going to wipe my brush this is a three-quarter inch or you can use three-quarter inch or one inch this is a one inch actually brush and uh, wipe most of that color off like this and I'm just going to work the edges, soften these edges right down here in some of these darks. Leave some of the darks, but I want to soften these edges back up into the sky here. And you can pull your paper towel. I love to pull the paper towel and colors through as well. But I want this. Do you see that modeling of that edges there? I want that. Let's take, let's just warm it up just a bit. Bit of yellow, bit of burnt sienna right up over here and let's come over to this side so it's a it looks a bit warmer we'll push some of those colors and see all these dirty colors come off my brush and that's kind of what I want so I want a, a warm side and a cool side here and you know as an artist that will just give you a wonderful play of the tones now I can soften this off let it go like this this would be leading in so let this soften off over here and bring the viewer's eye. Now see what happens is with these dark, my eye is coming into here. And you as the, as the artist dictate, you know, what happens to a viewer by how you use your colors. Let's put just a touch or a hint because right here you see that, you know, you see that real core dark right down in there. Okay, so, and that's what we want to do. We want to get that little bit darker right over there. And let's grab that. And we might want to have some of those colors extend up just a bit more, a bit higher up here. But we're going to paint the trees. I want them, I want this, this blurry edge, right into to, uh, a more defined color. Let's also toss some of this color. We'll get some of this burnt sienna, some of this yellow, a bit of this green. Don't mix it up real well. Let's put in... Uh, 
ground line right into here, right like this. And see, by keeping that ground line right there, let's just soften that edge there. And we'll, if we pull up and down, we can even give it the impression of some grass. It's a little soon, but you can. You know, and that's, that's what we do. We want this, this lost edge of shape. But see all this modeling of this tone? That's what I want. And you get that by don't work your brush too much on your palette, okay? Leave your, pal your color so they come off. May want to add a bit more yellow, because look what happens up in this foreground. Those grasses get more yellow. So we may want to add a bit more yellow right up in here and keep this a little bit I mean, up and down a little sometimes a little sideways here and we see we give the impressions of some of the grasses that might be there around the barn which is what i want to do now as you come into here so what is leading in so right here you see your darks right and so i'm going to go back and revisit my darks here for just a second let's keep it slightly warm not a little bit of cool so maybe just a tiny touch of blue and I'll lead that viewer right over here with some of this dark right over touching right in here and you can see how it's it, I'm pulling your eye this way right and I can connect these two a, a bit but now this is what happens and let me just let me uh, show you by overdoing it here for a second because then we can soften it out so what I, what I do is, if I come in here and put dark, which you see me do a lot in some uh, paintings, your eye comes into here and then and goes back into here. But see, they're unconnected. And so this dark that you have here, your eye bounces between the two. And so what's called leading in is where you would slowly lead this the viewer in with the contrast of tone. So I would lead the viewer in to the painting here going this way but i got a problem is that this is so much contrast here and so much contrast here your eye starts to flatten out that painting does that make sense so what you do is this is you actually you have to plan it from the beginning now some artists plan it you know right away some artists do it during the painting but i've got to soften i want some of these tones here but i've got to soften it and slowly let the darks come in as I'm going back here. So as you can see now, I'll just pick up a little bit of water right into my paper towel here and take, leave some of those tones, those color tones in here, because this is some of the, you know, the working of grasses and stuff that I want here. And it's picking up some of the tones you're seeing in other areas of the painting, but it's not overwhelming the painting itself. And now your eye is leading in. And what you, what you try to do is uh, work your color so that it gets maybe a little bit more heavy in color, a little bit, bit more going on back here, and less as it's coming forward, it'll get less and less. Now, there's all kinds of variations you can do with this, and it all has to do with temperature, tone, and all of that kind of stuff. And the artist can control those looks. And what this is, is basically there are, you know, eight rules of contrast inside color theory. And so I'm using a couple of, uh, of the rules here in, in painting this to get that, um, that tone. The tone of a color can mean its, its intensity, its value, its temperature, uh, and it's all together, right? So like I'll take this this softer here. I'll gray it out I'm gonna leave a warmer gray tone here and I'll push in some of those Other colors that we're gonna find here into some of these trees Maybe some of these back trees and stuff like that back here And so they'll recede so wherever I put some of this gray I'm graying out the tone making it more like the sky and this tone will soften off here. And I'll just leave a bit of that. We're going to paint some trees back there. I'll just leave a little bit of that. But I've got this cooler dark back up over here. And I might even, let's take some burnt sienna, a little green, a little blue. And the coolest of all we can get is a little red violet. And let's get, you know, towards those purpley blues. And you'll see a real cool color right down over here as it gets into some of that deeper, deeper shadow. So I'm in control 
of it. I want to leave the warm and then the cools right over here. I'm in control here about uh, you know what my uh, what my temperatures here look like. I just want that to be a little softer there. Now we'll paint some trees and stuff. But this is what I mean by the leading in. And you can control that. And we can still have, you know, beautiful warm textures up into the front up here. A beautiful warmth, fun bit of the painting up front. Let's get some yellows, some of these other colors in here, grayer tones, a little bit more yellow maybe. And we could, you know, put in some beautiful textures, but we want to control. So I'll put some textures in here. So this just comes in like this. We want to control though these lights and darks. Let's put in them and I'll change this. You'll see me cover most of this up but I start to play what I did not play as much as I experiment here with some of my looks so that I can make some grasses and stuff like that here and uh, you know while preserving my leading your eye in. And I'll even take my big brush with some of that gray color that we had and push some of that back into here just to soft because the gray is the sky and that's going to be your ultimate softness of everything that we do. So that's just an, that's just an idea. This is going to change. You could put greens in there. You could put more of your touches of your yellow greens. Let's even get a little brighter yellow green in there and maybe just a bit of of this color because you'll play or not play you'll experiment <laughs> with some of these colors in here trying to get the look that you want in your particular painting so I want this to head towards the fall here fall colors and uh, and so I don't want to get too much green which would be more towards your spring and summer I want to get some of those yellow tones and stuff in there but a, a little bit of green is good. Let's just take a bit of those yellows though. So I'll go heavy and stuff with the yellows and everything in here. And we're also going to, with our brush marks, you see I hold my brush very flat and I'm doing what is called linear, linear marks. This helps me set my, my planes of my landscape doing these linear marks here this way every once in a while up and down just a bit small back here larger ones up here as we start to emulate some of the grasses here you can put some larger ones back up through here as we emulate glasses smaller ones back up there so it just kind of sets the feeling of it so small marks into the back large marks up into the front I'll just poke a little extender into this brush and set it to the side for right now and I'm going to come in and start to block in. Before I do my trees, see how everything up here just stays wet. It's really, really wet, and it's really easy for me to manipulate. I want to work my trees before this gets dry, but it's a little wet for me to, to do a lot of the work I like to do. So I'm going to let it tack up here for a few minutes and work on the, uh, the actual barn here for a little bit. And uh, then we'll, we'll come back and work on some of that. Now, the barn, when I look at the photo of the barn, it's all wonky. It's kind of leaning in on this side. And, you know, and so you have to determine whether or not you're going to architecturally correct that uh, particular barn. I believe in architect, you know, unless it's like a really super old falling down barn, I believe in architecturally correcting it because you don't want the viewer to think, oh, I, you can't paint a straight line. So I architecturally correct that and correct the leaning of it. I'm going to take, this is a smaller brush. This is a number six um, Fusion Flat here, which is one of my favorites. It's nice and soft. I'm going to create some really kind of a grayed, let's get some yellow in here, some, or some English red oxide, some yellow here. And you're going to see, and we'll get some whites in here too. And I'm not going to mix it up real well, but you'll see that's going to be the color of that barn there. English red is such a beautiful old red, Venetian red, English red. And let's just come in here. First off, what I want to do is, and I just want to see what this color is going to look like and create some vertical marks, some verticals here soft and vertical some every once in a while will come across but I want to start to see what that color is going to look like in there and 
that's gonna be pretty good. We matter of fact, we might even just take some extender with this, a little bit of that green in there too, and pull some of this down. Now I don't always want to do vertical marks. Sometimes I like to do a few horizontals just to break up the uh, the look of the, you know all the vertical lines because they can get too much. And I'll keep it a little soft so I can see some of my other architectural places like the doors and stuff like that you know where I have in here and we'll just push some color in we're going to do this many 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 times here into this barn so we can start catching some of that look but you can see the tone and the undertone over there and uh, that works pretty good it's working pretty good on that one so let's just keep some of that yellow English red and it's going to cool, so maybe even a little violets and stuff over here. So I'm going to play, and if I want to kill the intensity, a little bit of green, a bit of that gray there, you know, and so we'll pull. Well, that's this beautiful color. See all the colors coming off of that? Holding that brush pretty flat. This is why I love the fusion brushes. And I'll go right through some of that architecture there. Pull some sideways every once in a while. Pull those down, get those colors across. And so I've got it, you know, very grayed over there. Let's take some of this color and we'll pull down. So we'll use the, you know, I started out a little too small with the brush. It was going to be too much work. And I want to get some of this down. See, this, this gives me the feeling of the barn. Now, as we come over to the other side, over there you'll see that that other side here is lighter and it's warmer so it's going to have a little more yellow into it so let's grab a little more yellow maybe even a little of this gray and we'll come right into here and we'll drop that edge down here okay push that edge in there we got a long ways to go, but this this starts that out, and that's that works pretty well. Now, there's the edge of that that dark area that is going to be there. I'm going to take even I'll grab some of my other colors, my greens, my violets over here that I used in that cool, and I'll put them into here as well. And when you're painting a barn or your landscape painting, you're constantly worried about, and it, or you should be constantly worried about the tones. So. What I'm doing is I'm carrying some of these tones that you pick up into here right into that area there. That's what we want. Maybe a bit of this can fall right underneath the edge of the shadow edge of that, uh, of the roof line there. Okay, let's drop maybe a bit more violet here. So I play the tones. If I got violet and stuff, I'll use green and blue into that to cool that off a bit. Let's grab just a bit more. Let's cool that off. We'll come right up here by the point of this and uh, we'll push that shadow line in for the relief of the barn there. Pull down slightly and uh, just let that shadow kind of leave, leave, you know, go off and leave, just like what you see there. Or even just kind of specifically pull it down and then just lift the brush air off your brush so that it, it kind of fades out. And that's kind of what we want to do. Change the tone a little bit. So I never paint for too long with the same tone. So I'll pull this down a bit. Sometimes I'll just go right up into the roof here because I've got to put the roof on. And so I don't get a start-stop line. And so th that's kind of important too, guys. And if you're a la prima, you might even blur this out, maybe up towards the tree line a bit there as well. Let's grab some more darks right in here. And let's push that dark line in there. And I'll look for holidays. There's a little holiday right in there. So I'll, I'll just rub that out. And so now we're setting in, and I, I, as much as I love that, that's going to be a little bit distracting because um, I want to take some other marks in there. So I'll just pull that out a bit. I like that light hitting in there. That's, that's really kind of nice. We might want some of this lighter that we used up here. Take some of that right up in here. 
So I'm pulling some of the colors that you see right in the uh, foreground, right back here into the barn. It's tone. You know, you get the beautiful paintings. And, you know, Richard Smith was such a master at tone. And he spent so many times in his good, he has a couple of really nice books that just go right into tone and painting with the tone. But I understand all these tones. And let me tell you about something here, guys. Those of you who want to prove. I have been teaching color theory because I was a colorist and a chemist before I was an artist. And so I knew all about colors, making colors, how to chemically make colors. And, and do all kinds of things with them. And so it's helped my career a lot. And so way back in 1986, I started teaching a lot of color theory classes. And I have an online color theory class that has been going on for years and will continue to go on for years. And it is one of the most valuable classes that you can ever take. Color theory, studying the theory. Of, and see, I can instantly recognize some of these tones, grab them out of there. I know how to make them because I do so much of the theory and I paint with that theory. And that's the same thing Smith is saying to do. In his All the Prima books, he has you mix chart after chart after chart after chart in finding those tones and training your eye to see those tones. Okay, And I always tell my students, it's just like this, and I know I'm talking a lot. It's just like if you go to the market the very first time, you have to take a map. If you're going to drive some way, you have to take a map, and you have to watch the, your, how you're going there. And as you develop this kind of technique, or what we have here, mixing these tones, making these tones, that becomes second nature to you, and you start doing it without, you know, it's just like going to the market. By the time you're gone 5, 6, 10, 12, 20 times, you no longer need that map. And you can, uh, you know, you can get there really easy, really efficiently just by, um, because you've repeated that and gone there. Well, that's the same thing with all these colors that I use. I know this color palette that I use. I know, I know all of the color palettes that I use and how to get to some of these tones very efficiently uh, and and quickly. So here I'm going to increase that shadow because there's an increased shadow line right into there. Now I want to I want to soften that line, so I'll just tap into a little bit of my other color here, and I'll pull up and disrupt that line here. Sometimes I'll pull down here to remove it. You can see with my paper towel that will remove it, and I'll work back and forth. I'm softening the tone I'm not blending the tone blending makes you you make you know other values here what I'm doing is is I always like to call it incorporate the tones in other words make it softer by incorporating the tones together here and uh, make it appear a little softer let's put a thinner line which is the sunny side over here you will have a bit of a cast shadow but it'll be a bit of a thinner line over here. And you're going to have that under the eave over here. So we'll just take that right here. And it's actually just a cast shadow there. And we'll pull that in and out there. And that looks pretty good. So you can see, see that area. And you see that area over there. So we start to do, we start to get that. Now, for the roof, we want to restate some of these beautiful grays. Let's get some of our grays out here. And that roof is going to carry a lot of colors into it. Maybe a little green, maybe a little bit of the red. Beautiful, beautiful grays. A little bit more blue here. Let's get a bit more blue. These, and the reason why I like the sapphire, it's a little weaker of a blue than the thalo. So it grays really, really nice. It needs to be a bit warmer. So we'll get that yellow in there. And see, there's that, there's that gray. You see, it's just a bit dark. But I'm going to leave it just a bit dark right now. Let's go ahead and apply some of that in here. And nice thick paint this time. Really thick paint. And see how it's coming off my brush slightly different i want that sometimes you see me use a palette knife when doing this and i like that effect as well the painting knife that's just a wonderful effect try to get rid of some of those holidays and stuff that you might have there let's um 
And this is the big brush. You can go to a smaller brush if you, if you want to. Now there's a bit more of a point here and then we'll push just an edge here. And I might, I might, I might, if I had that here, let's use my really big one, my big knife here. And because the big knife just draws it really super easy. And let's just put in that edge there. And see, that's what I like to do. Do you see that little pull off I did at the end there? I like to do that because it just kind of scrapes the edge and it does great things. Let's take a little warmer color here and lighter and warmer and kind of push that down the sides here. This is what I like with the knife. It's going to push in some of these other colors and, and contrasting colors that I, that I get in there. And a small knife does it as well like your uh, smaller thing or a smaller brush will do it as well. Here's just a, a, a little bit smaller brush. And, but I'll hold that brush flatter here as I work these colors. And what I'm doing is I'm not blending them. I do what I call incorporate them together so that you, it's kind of like what I, I always envision it is kind of like marbleizing color, okay? Uh, you know, you, you let those colors kind of swirl and uh, come around together, but they don't mix. You don't want them, you know, mixing up. And I use other kinds of things. I use sometimes these th tongue depressors and stuff like that. I use a large variety of th things to do that with, and it works really, really well. This larger knife, I have a whole bunch, I have a whole stack of, of uh, different kinds of knives over there that, that all work really, really well. And the difference is I was looking for my other my other one here. And I just went over and got this one right here. This is my favorite. This is a Liquitex number five. The links and again, everything that I use is uh, in, the, um, in the video description down below. But I like this. Now, this, because I like it because it's got a little point and I can lean up onto that point and adjust it. So sometimes I'll put it on with one knife, adjust it with another or adjust it with a brush so I can start getting some of the interest that I want. Now there's that nice warm, kind of like a, there's a peak to it here. So this is gonna uh, come out a little bit more this way and I'll put it on with some of this lighter, warmer tone that we have here and I'll adjust it. I'll be adjusting this as well, but we want to let this come up towards that peak. I can't do it uh, perfectly yet because I got to paint all these trees but I'm just going to start you know emulating that and we want I'll take some of this shadow here this shadow we'll just put a little darker bit of this shadow right up here to help form that peak here down like that so I you know I can start looking at architectural stuff to make sure I'm you know, more precise, but I don't worry too much yet. So here I'll put a, so we got that little peak and then I'll, I'll get this little edge and see, I like that broken edge of color that you get along that edge here, but I like to draw with my knife. That's one of the things I like to do is, uh, especially if I'm painting these edges, I like to really draw with that knife and you can see in the, and I like to have that big thing up there because it helps me see more details and stuff. But I can look up there and see some of the, the architectural details in it that I want to try to capture here. Not quite as light. Draw that in. And sometimes I'll work a, a few times in here, getting some of that architecture a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And there's a smaller, not quite as light of an edge right below this, which is actually the thickness of the roof. So we'll drop some of that in. And you may have to, depending on how well it went, you may have to redo some of your shadow there as well. So I start to, you know, I, I, 
I don't go in and try to be absolutely perfect, but I do try to start getting some of the look. And uh, you know, I and I'll put it in first with the brush, nice and soft, and I'll come back with my knife and start adding some of the the interest to it. So you can see how that breaks it up a bit. And you start get some interest, maybe a touch of the blue and these yellows into the grays right back here into this corner. Darker shadowy kind of color, some of the colors you would find in the sky. And again, you know, what an artist does is we take what we see and we enhance it quite a bit. So, you know, yeah, I don't see exactly that tone, but I'm, you know... I'm coming close with it. That's what I'm trying to do. So there's that one there. Now let's uh, take some of our burnt sienna, some of the green. So I'm going to make some of the architectural openings to the barn here, barn doors, this kind of stuff here. And I'm going to start them out not quite as, not as dark because when you look at this, you see how dark those are. And those can be like super, uh, a little too dark, you know, when, uh, you know, for, um, the painting, so I'm going to start out not quite as dark, not quite as dark as I see, and I'll start just with this knife. Now, you can use a brush, too. You know, both of them are going to give you a different look here, and I will, but I want to be, I want, you know, there's some people that say, oh, yeah, okay, we're going to do all the prima here. Let's relax all of our edges. And I do, to a certain extent, want to relax my edges, but I do want to be a little bit architecturally correct. In other words, have straight lines. Not, not perfect lines, but good straight lines. And there's a difference. Let me grab one of my, my boards here. Okay. One of the things I use a lot is this board that has this. And, you know, if you want to get super straight lines, you can use this board and just run your brush. You see me use this right there. See how it just makes a nice line. You see me use this all the time in uh, marine paintings. But uh, for something that's just this simple, I can just run my hand here and and make a pretty straight line. Or use just the edge of the of a bo or, you know a bar or a yardstick or something like that just to help and run your 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 brush right against the line there and that'll help you straighten up some of your architecture and then I'll come in here and I'll break some of this up I won't take out absolutely all of the uh, I won't take out all of the lights that are are kind of casting through there just because I want to uh, leave some of that difference now maybe a bit bluer darker That'll come right up here on this edge, right in there, as that shadow here, right like that. So it creates, by creating, see, we don't see it on that, on that one there on the reference photo. But if you create one shadow side darker than the others, you'll create more depth into that opening because it creates that shadow. See how it creates a little bit of depth into that opening. Now... On the original there, there's a, a slight bit of an angle, a cut angle right there on each one of these. So I might go ahead and push that in. And we'll just pull this across, kind of broken there. And maybe a little yellow, a little green here through some of this just to break up some of that, that darkness there. Let's... Let's do this now. Let's take, this is my, my number six, and I love the number six. I also, but the number six, and this is all kinds of different looks you can get. Like you see me use the number six quite a bit there to do the drawings of the edges. The knife works really well too, grabbing this. And it's an artist's choice which one you're going to use. The knife I can watch right ahead of me really easy. But the number six, I can run it right against the you know, the edge of a um, of a board. I could set it up there and run it against the edge of the board really easy to help me get a straight line. And I don't need an absolute perfect line here, but I do want to get 
put in, you can see it right there, some of the shadows that are there. And in the, in the actual barn, there's some other ones, um, other shadow lines, other, like right through here is the barn door and the line of the barn door right here. And, you know, how do you, how do you uh, emulate that? You know, it's just... I, I'll use the edge of my knife and I'll roll up on the edge and I'll roll down flat if I want the line a little wider, you know, and, and uh, that's up to you, you know, how, how much you want to do. You can put in, there's a lot of others. And I was thinking, you know, maybe, you know, this is a big barn that's really open. There is a little door right there and it's, you know, do you open the door? Do you close the door? Do you leave the door? You know, that's all going to be uh, your decisions of what it is that you want to do. But um, let's take, let's go a little bit darker. So some of our, our English red, some blue, some violet, maybe a touch of green here. And this other shadow door comes up a little higher over here, almost to the edge. So we'll pull down. Try to be architecturally correct here. We'll pull down and let's just fix that edge. I wanna, in other words, don't leave wonky little edges. Fix your edges and stuff in there and uh, fix, that bar, fix up that barn edge there, okay? And uh, so don't leave a wonky edge. Be architecturally correct. Slow down inside. You can run your brush against the edge of a, a board here to help stabilize it so that you get a nice edge there. That's pretty good. And uh, here in, the, um, in this barn, there's going to be some other, other architectural other areas here. So we'll grab that. Let's take a constantly change the tone. Let's orange that up a bit. And just pull down a bit, just like what we see there in that photo to emulate some of that other color there of that pulling down. And combine your brush and your knife. So the brush will do one thing. See how it's a different line? And the knife gives you those granulations. And I can work the two together here to get some nice architectural interest there to the barn. And I, that's the kind of way I like to do it. So I may do it with the brush, and I may do a little bit of it here with the, the knife and the brush together, adding some interest, some lines, some stuff going on. Let's put a, as we get, let's add some yellow and some white to that, and uh, we'll get that lighter tone. And if you want, see, this just makes, look at how pretty that is with that lighter tone and that nice edge to the barn there lighter warmer here and that's just what you need just hold that brush flat you could do this with the knife as well but see it just makes a real pretty clean little line and edge here and then i'll take maybe a little darker version of that tone and we'll push that up here up onto the, the sides here, or a little higher, which will help me create the, the impression of the slats or the, the sides of the barn. Then I, I drop down into my uh, opening there a bit, so I'll just take some of that out. This, but I don't have to be perfect. See, I left, if I leave that edge just a not quite as perfect as what you see over there, it gives the barn a bit more character, if that makes sense. But I do like that lighter yellow and some of that going on right in there. So, and you can come back, you know, those of you that really love the Ala Prima, which would be really nice here, is to uh, come in and do some of this with texture because that would be just really nice putting in some of the textures that you might see on this particular barn here maybe a bit more light and edge and see some by working that palette that i have there with all these different tones i'm getting some really nice 
streaky color here. That's very different. Now I want a bit more cooler, maybe a, a bit of that English red, some of the blue and raw and the um, red violet here. Nice deeper little tone that I love that deeper reddish tone. And I'll put now see don't don't go everywhere with it without changing the tone. In other words, I'll take it here, maybe a little more English red and some yellow as I come down out of that. So that tone changes. This is what makes the, you know, really sets the artist away from each other, is how much they, they go in and change some of those tones, work those tones here. So I'll push that down in there. Maybe I'll soften that with just a mark or two of some of the yellow. You don't want to create rainbows or anything, but you're painting a barn that you want to get some of these, these, see all that modeling of that color. You want to be able to emulate some of that. Pulling down here, maybe some burnt sienna. It's not, burnt sienna is not quite as orange. It's a more toned color. And burnt sienna, a little blue, gives you a bit more gray. But that burnt sienna is such a pretty tone in some of this as well. And it just helps that barn color here. So we'll get some of that color in. Maybe a, a few areas of the deep here. See, I put up quite a few different colors on my brush. And I'll pull down here. Create the look of those slats and that color pulling down here. Here we go. Just like that. Maybe a bit of it over here. Not too much. Leave that slightly more yellow. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's coming good. Let's go up. Let's let that barn tack up a bit. Okay, and one reason why I want, because I don't want to get a lot of blending. So I let it tack up. Now, this sky is still very wet here. So, But that's what I want to have, some of that, so I can work some of these trees. Let's start out with some lighter tones. Let's just come here, lighter, dirtier tones. Some of these yellows, yellow oxide, right into some of these dirtier greens and tones here, just with my number six. And I want to work some of the edges here. And that might be a bit dark. Have your softening brush, this big wide brush. Let's take some of that, some of that extra paint out of there. Just pinch wipe it like this. Take out some of that extra paint. And you just pull through that. See how it blurs those edges? That's what I'm looking for, is that blurring. I'm not looking at blending it. I blur it. See how I blur the edges? That's what I'm looking for. And I want to create this real blurry, blurry edge. And, um, you know, and, and how much you do, like let me go grab this one here again. You know, if you're looking at... Um, Richard Smith, like what he did here. See how he really blurred that out. You leave some areas right around where you want that viewer to pull in. You leave them nice marks, and then you leave it nice and blurry out over here. And, you know, it's such a, it's such a great look here. And so we're going to use multiple colors here. Let's use this, maybe a touch of our English red here. We'll put in a toned, a little bit more toned. We want to leave some sky holes. Or you come back, like I've showed you in other videos, and, and pull sky holes through here. I've showed you that in other videos. But um, we'll pull that down and blur through. See how that just blurs it and sets it further back, right? Just a couple times. You don't need to get crazy with it. Let's take a bit of our English red and some green. That's darker colors right over here. Maybe a bit more green, maybe a touch of yellow. I'm constantly changing the tone here. Sometimes you'll see me skip a knife around and do this. You know, I love to also take a, you know, this knife right here. You see me do it with clouds and push down and blur them together like that. Just work those colors, but don't take out all your gray sky. Just work some of those colors here. Let's uh, get some yellows here. Small, I like the small brush 
You know, you can use a large brush by using just all the different kinds of corners. So you'll see me sometimes take a large brush. I'll even leave a little bit of this gray and stuff into this large brush. And you'll see me do this with the corner. I like working the corner as well because the, the, the mark is not quite as perfect. And so, but what I want to do is get this variety of color and tone. And so let's get a little heavier right up here with some of our yellows, warmer tones, and then we'll skip it around a bit as we go up higher where we're gonna push some of those other tree colors here. There we go, in, okay. And let's push some of that heavier color right in here. I wanna push this heavier color right around that. I'm gonna plant it so it goes up and around this, uh, this roof so it'll help the roof come forward. We'll just soften, you could use your big brush, you could use this one, soften, but you don't wanna lose all your sky, Dave, so. And see, I'll let that yellow in the sky just kinda of come together there. That's what I'm looking for, is these tones to blur together. Here, blur together, okay? Let's, um, and I can go back and forth. Let's go grab some of this gray and let's just restate that edge right there. I'll let this edge be a little lost, but I do want to be able to pick out the edge of the roof. You can see it quite clearly on the photo. So I do want to be able to see the edge of the roof here up against the tree line here. But I want to also have a little bit of blurriness to it because that's the technique there. That's better. That works better. You can see those blues. I need to get some of those in these nice warmer tones from these trees in here as well. And so see, I just do this. I overpaint it. I'll work those tones in and then I'll come back and set some of these lighter tones right over, taking some of it out while still giving the painting the slope and stuff that you see there in the barn. This is where you get all of that beautiful interest. And sometimes I'll take like this gray, maybe a bit more blue and stuff here into some of this gray and just push that right in. And that just, see, it just gives you a beautiful, that sense of tone, traveling the tones here through the painting. That's what I want to do is just travel those tones. So. You see, it's a building process. And then you as the artist, you dictate how much it's, or what it's gonna look like by how much you do. You know, how much do you do on this? So there's some differences between, and I want more of a golden yellow, maybe a bit of orange, or the, the naphthol red light in the yellow, maybe a bit of Darya light in there. And some of these nice golden warmer tones here. Yeah, that's pretty. Nice fall colors, warmth, fall colors, right up here towards the front here. And it's also a bit of the shadowy tone here. A little bit of the English red, some of my yellows here. Maybe a bit of the burnt sienna. That's a bit, that's a powerful orange. Now, see if it's too powerful for you, you just, if you go, oh wow, that's pretty bright add a little bit of green and see how that tones that right down. See how it tones it down? Green is your friend when you're working with the oranges and stuff, especially in doing some of these fall, these fall scenes. You know, that green is your friend here. Here we go, just push that through, soften that out a bit. Okay, yeah, that works. And we'll get some, uh, I'm gonna go up a little bit to a bit bigger brush here with some green and some yellow here and work some more different tones. Usually when I'm painting a landscape like this and you've seen me in some of the other ones, I'll work these areas here several times, all kinds of colors, but several times. And then slowly then I'll set some shadows in, which will uh, you know dictate 
what's in front, what's behind. Let's take a little cool. Let's set just a bit of the shadow and separate. That's just, it's real close, but it's probably just a touch too dark. So I'll lighten it with some yellow oxide. That's better. Lighten it with just a little yellow oxide. What you have to remember, and, and, and it takes a little trial and error, especially for you uh, beginners, it takes a little trial and error to figure out, because acrylics dry one value darker. So we have to keep that in mind as we're working some of our colors, some of our areas. We have to remember the acrylics will dry a little darker. So sometimes you may have to come back and visit it a couple times here. Got a little bit of that extra color in there. Pull that through. But see, I don't let it stop me. And I don't let it stop me because I can come back with that light gray sky at any time, which is what I like to do every once in a while. And you've seen me on other videos. Matter of fact, I had a comment of it. A lady said, that was so nice to see you come back and push in sky holes. Yeah. You know, I do that all the time. I come back and will tap in little sky holes, you know, openings. into When I feel like the trees and stuff are getting a bit heavy, I just come back and work that lighter color and stuff back in there, and it works really nice, really, really nice. So let's get back into uh, some of this light. And maybe, uh, you know, you look for variations. Like maybe I'll take some of this yellow and a bit of white. Instead of using the yellow oxide, I'll make my lighter yellow tones here. Uh, maybe just a touch of green. Some of these lighter tones here from my... And don't mix it up too well. I'm going to make more towards the orange here. And... I'll apply some of this. Let's start right up here where we know we're going to go lighter. I'll apply some of this with my knife, just like this. See, right over some of those shadows. That's what starts to break some of that up, see? And so maybe a touch more light will head right up here towards the light here. Some of these light trees here. There we go. Some of those light areas and heavier color areas here. A little bit of shadow color into that. I love the knife. And I really like to like put it on heavy like that and then just blur through. And uh, let that just all sit really, uh, you know, just blurry. Just, vi you know, your vision is very blurry here. Here, and so I'll put it in sometimes a little heavier and then let it uh, just kind of drag and granulate. You can take some, if you get too heavy, just take some of your shadow back into that and paint into it. Create the, the you know, tap in and create the softer edges of some other colors in there. But uh, that works really fun here too. Get some of those colors, those edges there, just like that. And don't forget those darn sky holes. You know, hit some of those darn sky holes in there to help that keep that lightness and airiness to it here. Hit some of those back and forth. You can soften their edges, touch them. Sometimes I use the brush. Sometimes I'll just blur them out a bit, just blur them just a bit. So you get some of those sky holes, a few of them. Like you might have just a few of them around, you know, through here. And uh, then you might touch a bit more yellow here, here a bit more yellow, a little bit heavier, and see I'll, I'll go ahead and go a little heavier, and then I'll take it out, take some of it out. Sometimes I'll come back, take some of it out with my brush. That works nice as well, 
just come back in here. So you just take some of it out with your brush. And so what you do is, you know, what where you want to do the goal and what I try to do, my ultimate goal here, what I try to do is get a nice variation of marks. That's what I want to have is so that my marks are always changing a bit here. So I'll get a little light color there. A few lighter marks. Take some of that lighter color right into my uh, barn there as well. Here. And so you're working the colors. And so, so my main tone that I'm doing stuff with to keep is basically that English red and the blue and this which is the gray which is kind of going into everything here and then I'm uh, varying those tones here and so like on this roof you'll paint it several times it's still a gray but look at all the tones that it came uh, that it's carrying there and the more tones that it carries the prettier it gets and you can have, like on the original there, there's some edges of some windows and stuff like that that are here on the side. And I just, I'll just kind of suggest them. I like to suggest them with like the knife here. You know, it doesn't take very much to suggest here. Now, that got a... And, you see how I pull it down now? A lot of it would just go, <gasps> I just made a mistake. I look at it as an opportunity to use that to correct it. So I, I pulled that light down through there, and now I'll just I'll push in some dark and use that to correct that whole side there and you know increase some architecture there on the building, which is gonna work out pretty nice. Let's take a little bit of yellow. So I might want to increase some architectural marks here on the barn. Little shines and movements here, little light yellow, little shines, little edges. Now in the uh, original, now see that's a, a bit much. And to wipe, if I wipe that out, I'd smear it. That would just so I'll take a it doesn't even have to be the same I don't want really the same orange or light yellow that I used before I'm just going to use a version of it and pull through and hit some of that and take that out not all of it because I like that little light you know in the photo it's got all these nice little light ref little light points but we're not going to emulate all of those let's use this to Get the edge of that barn back in here. See, I like that point of that knife. It just does such a nice job there of getting some of that other architecture in there. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, I might, uh, you know, many times, let me just thin this up. If I thin this on my knife, this kind of brown, a little bit more green will make it a touch more brown. But you can use that to uh, emulate some of that. Just light, just draw these through different angles and stuff, and they will come out. Just give you little marks that will start to, the, the viewer will just pick them up every once in a while, and uh, they'll start to see them as the branches and stuff of the trees. And then we'll come back and put some other lights and stuff in there. You know, and just get some of those those trees and stuff in there. And push that around a bit there. And you can put in more tree trunks if you want, or it's up to you. You know, just kind of, I use the knife to kind of scrape them through and stuff. Give you the, the edges lines, marks, here, ideas, there. 
some of those trees. Not done yet, but that gets you some of the ideas there. And start to look to break up here some of the other tones. A little darker. I want a darker tone, a little darker to break up some of this, like, and soften it out a bit. Like there's other stuff going on, but you still see that shadow. Maybe uh, just a touch of light right up here by the front. So you don't want to have just an outline. So I, one of the things that I look for, and this is very important, guys, look for areas that you might have just kind of outlined, like you have dark going down the whole side. Break it with some light. You know, that's, you know, I've got it right in there. See how the whole thing is just about the same all the way through. So I'll break that, that light, that edge right there. And that's maybe just a touch heavy. So I'll take a little shadow here and take some of it out. See, I like building some of that with that knife. It just works really nice here. You could have a, let's, let's go to a little touch more green. Yellow and green, nice light yellow green here. Get some of that that color in there as well. Because we have some of it down here, see? So we're going to want some of it hitting up in here. A little bit of it. Right up in there. And, uh, but you can, you know, you can be more precise with your trees if you want. You know, more... Uh, shadows, lights. You've seen me paint all different kinds of trees, and I do them all different kinds of ways. And today I'm going to focus you in more into here, you know, along that line, bringing you right up into here than I am doing it the, uh, you know, more of, of uh, getting some of these different colors and tones and stuff around here. That's what I'm going to concentrate on and doing it several times to get some of these tones that I want to get in here. So I get this nice variety. That's what I'm looking for, is this really nice variety of color and tone here. Maybe some little touch of brighter yellow green there, here. A little bit more yellow here. And see, just little sparks of it. And this is what I love about this is, even though the photo doesn't show this, you know, we can hit little sparks of this color. There, picked up a little shadow. But little sparks of the color here. So let's go just a touch lighter. Nice little yellow green here. And you can blur some of that in and leave it just kind of touched and sparked as well. That's what I like to call it, sparks of color. Here. There we go. Just like that. And, and you'll evaluate it and look at it and see what it needs. But, uh, you know, get some of that. Let's put a bit of this nice yellow green kind of sparks you know maybe a bit of it right up here not too far down on our shadow side though because it wouldn't be there right it wouldn't be down over there but maybe the light hits right up here by the top and it hits a few little edges and uh, that's all it that's all it's gonna hit and uh, Push the color around a bit. We go, and I'll got this beautiful gray light. Let's just bring out the, so I can use my, go back and grab your brush, because your brush is gonna keep a different, a different mark now. Redress, restate some of that edge. Keep it a little soft. Some of those colors there. So he sets that up. So that sets up 
here coming into this part of the barn and you can do a heck of a lot more architectural work on it. On the barn itself, I didn't through here. Now I'm a little high, I should pull, well, there's bushes and stuff down there. If I'm gonna leave the bushes, I should emulate those there a bit more than what I have. So let's just emulate this as little bushes here. Get a little bit of light here. Remember, this is an almost an abandoned barn, so not too much going on with it anymore. Maybe it's just growing right there in front, some of these bushes and stuff right in front of the edge of the barn there. A bit more yellow. A few little sparks there. That's pretty neat. Do I want to, and I think I want to, redress that shadow over there. A little blue, a little green into that. Let's thin it out. I'm going to thin it out. There's a good rule, and you've heard me, and I haven't said it at all yet today, but it is a good rule. Shadows are transparent. Lights are thicker. So I leave all my shadows here a little bit more transparent. And let's just blur that in there. A little bit shadow there. And see how I, I, I touched down into that wet color and drug it up, and I'll just leave it. And let's just pull that out down there like that. Maybe blur off that edge. I don't like perfect edges when they're receding, when they're going back back there. So that might be a bit much. So we might have to lighten that up just a touch. Let's get a little green, a little bit of our orangey colors here. Just touch through just to lighten that just a bit there that's not too bad that that line is still a little I want it more broken and maybe a little bit more green softer color between the two so that it doesn't it's not so distracting you can now see that's better you see how it recedes more you can find the edge but you got to Kind of hunt it down a little bit, okay, so the edge is not completely perfect. All right, so let's get uh, back up over here. I thought I had, I guess I better go get some more of that here. Some, uh, give me just a second, I'll be right back. I add a yellow oxide here. Okay. Oh, no, 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 I've got a tiny bit left, <laughs> so. We'll uh, work on this. We'll get this, see if we can get some of this out of here. A little bit more yellow oxide, because I want to use it up here towards the front here as I draw some of this color in. So now let's draw in again. Let's take some of this dark and let's just play this right along that edge there of, of the painting here. Some of this dark, this is where I love the large brush painting here. Let's just draw some of that dark in there. We'll let that come in, okay? And uh, yeah, that works. And I'll thin it now. Let's thin it here. We'll draw some of it in horizontal lines. This gives you your linear perspective. And I'll be taking some of that out, okay? This will give us our linear, see how that draws you in? But it's nowhere near as dark as what I have going on out here. And I'll work in some of the larger marks and then let these marks, this slow up and down vertical marks, get smaller and smaller as I pull further back there. Because that will give me my depth, right? Okay, so Let's grab some thicker yellow and white here. Now, you see, thickness, here I'll just get this a little bit more. That's a little heavy, so guess what I get to do? Take it back out, but I'm not going to stop. So I got a little heavy, heavier than I wanted, and not quite as yellow as I wanted, so I do it again. 
and I do it again and I do it again and we'll get this a little smaller heading back here little bits of some of those yellows and stuff hitting there for like little grasses tiny little marks of it and you've seen me in painting prairie and stuff I paint grasses and stuff all different kinds of ways here and here we go and one like this and we'll put a little bit more light into some of that I'm gonna work this several times right up into the front really draw the viewer in there carry colors and tones let's just put a bit of that back in there okay I mean, if I, and, you know, I love the yellows. You get these streaks of yellows, yellow greens here. Let's just streak some of that yellow right in there. See, nice fall. And then put a, another mark or two of that yellow, maybe a bit more powerful, right up over here as well. There, like that. And that's really where I love to, there we go, just little touches and sparks of it. And I'd love to do it with the big brush. And you can see on my big brush, it, it really gets all of these little flared out edges and stuff. And I really like that to, to touch in. And those of you that painted um, some of the prairie landscapes with me, you know this brush, this brush that I use. You can, you know, you can go back and review some of those. I love this brush for doing more of the, the more, uh, you know, grasses that you see in so many other paintings that I do. And it's it's basically my grass brush, which is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Let's, um, while I'm working this, I'm going to let this set for just a minute so I don't blend it too much. I'm going to take here some blue and uh, quite a bit of white and... Uh, add a bit more life to the gray just in a few areas here a bit more life to that gray pulling through here so you see just a bit more of the the blue coming through and um, break up some of these edges here so you'll get the idea of more distant trees maybe uh, a few little sky holes there you know, coming through and soften that out. Sometimes I really do love to just push the knife around. I love knife painting and this just gives you that mottled edge. See that edge stays very mottled there. You can give some of the nice uh, horizontal strokes to give the, the idea of the sky and stuff, but it's just really nice to uh, sometimes get those nice model strokes let's put a bit more into here take out just a bit of our trees see how easy that is to take them out and which will lighten up the feeling of the landscape just a bit so I'll take a few of them out here right in through there like that there that's pretty nice <coughs> excuse me maybe some of that color goes right back into my barn there I like some of that to maybe hit right up here there Right up there like that. And, you know, if that's too much, that is really, <laughs> it's ah, almost too much. I'm going to take my brush here. But I like that hit. Now, you got to remember, and this is what it gets really hard, guys, towards the end of the painting is, uh, and we're not quite to the end of the painting, but you, you know, you put that on there and, and you think, oh, maybe that's too much, but it's going to dry down. So you have to remember that. So it might come on a, a little bit too much contrast, but it might also dry down enough that it won't be too much of a problem, see? So 
we'll just wait and see. That might, but I, I that edge is just a touch too much. So, and I want to put the edge of the the roof line in there too. So, just touch that roof line in there. And you know, this is the the one thing with landscapes here that I really started to understand a lot more is, you know. Uh, here, especially in the last few years, is I just I just emulate it. I don't try to be perfect. I just emulate it, and uh, then the viewer will see it. <laughs> you know, if I go in there and try to make it perfect, it never works. So let's take just this edge, a little bit more, maybe a touch of green across there. We don't want to block off the entrance to the, the barn too much, but we get a bit of that in there. And uh, let's go a bit more shadow here. That shadow is really important. See how it pulls your eye? It brings that viewer right up in here into that into the painting. So that's really important that we make sure we catch enough of that shadow in there break it up a bit carry some of that back there grab some of that yellow with that and just see it's tones it's the color more than anything else that's doing all of my painting for me um you know I'll grab some I'll, i won't mix it up real well Grab some of this and just pull that across and see all of that interest that now starts to come in there. And that's what I start to do. So there's a lot of artists that will, um, you know, work a, a, a better, smoother edge in there. And I'm one that let's uh, leave it a bit rough, especially since some of this is going to dry down. Let's leave it a bit rough with those tones. See the interest that that creates. Let's use that lighter yellow green here on this side. You're almost like creating a little path or a little road there as that's coming forward. Textures and paint. As I come forward, I like textures in the paint. I like to get those here. There we go. Maybe just a, you know, the, the photo doesn't have it, but maybe just a hint of an idea of the little road or path here going right up to the barn there. Just a hint. And then I've got to let it, you know, I've got to lighten it up. What do you got to do? You got to lighten it up and because uh, I'm leading the viewer in here. So I'll use this little path and see, I'm just modeling up my colors here using little horizontal strokes, little horizontal movements of my knife to suggest that path here. And uh, maybe a bit of the suggestion of some of that coming around to this side here. There. But see, that's pulling the viewer right into that, this area of the painting. Which is what I want. I'm building color here. And I'm going back and forth and softening and working the knife, working those colors. And see, by you don't work it so much that you create other colors, but you're creating this modeling of these colors that are kind of working together here. A little bit of shadow here. A little bit uh, more of a shadow right here along that edge. There we go. Just a bit more. That works. A little bit of color. And see, just real quick. And I find if I don't do it quick, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll usually overdo it. So I like to do it rather quick, suggestive, and uh, then I always find myself I'm a little safer when I do that. Let's give 
just the gentle outline here of that upper window, that upper door that is shut here on this one. So we'll do a gentle line of it. But you don't want to outline it completely. You don't need to like do a complete rectangle outline to say that it's there. It only needs to be a little bit here to suggest that it's there. So, so I don't need to go all around to all four sides here. I don't need to do that. Just maybe that right there. Maybe uh, a bit lighter yellow and uh, just so the color's a little different because it's a different piece. It's not that side. It's a door, so it's a little different piece. So break the, the actual color there. Let's reset that. So that's how I work those doors and stuff like that, you know, that you that you see. And there's quite a few of them. There's another one over there and, and, and stuff. And you can you can add them in or just simple just add in some simple lines and be kind of suggestive of it. That's all, you know, that's all it really needs as well. Just suggestive of some of that architecture there. You don't need to get wild and crazy with it. Just some suggestions here. There we go, just a few. I like that. And, uh, Let's get a little more lighter yellow light. So see, it didn't dry down quite as much as I thought it was going to. And now I'm starting to uh, also look at contrast into the painting. How much contrast I want into the painting here. This nice warmer kind of yellow gray here. Push some of that across. There we go. Yeah. How much do you want? Let's put a little edge of it right here. A little broken line. See, I turn my knife and break the edges and stuff. Pull slow so the paint comes off. There. A little lighter right up here draw up that point that didn't get anything off of it because there wasn't anything there here we go a little bit more there a little bit of the point of the barn that is sits out there pretty nice it could have um you know and now it's, you know, to the different degrees of contrast that I look through here. How much do I want? And maybe I want a, a few areas of that darker. Just little touches darker, but slightly intense little marks. That just uh, really pops the painting. Here. That's a personal choice here. I think I'll thin this out. A little more burnt sienna into that. And a little bit of red violet. So it's got the... And if it's too bright for you, you hit it with just a touch of green. But uh, get a fresh paper towel. Here. And I can work some of these smaller little marks color streaks and stuff here to the barn and uh, it's up to you how much you do there yeah that works maybe uh, very thin just a whisper of them right here Leave most of that nice warm side. A nice, uh, a little bit of green with that. Graze that down. 
put maybe just a touch more shadow here. See, that will really advance this color, this corner, I mean. Really advance that corner. It's all up to you. That's a little wonky, just a, a little bit wonky. I'll straighten my line just a bit, but I like to kind of blur it out a bit so it's not... It's If it's too sharp, it's too architectural for a nice a la prima painting. Now, let's take some of that right in with this and add a few little marks. Now, that's, see, that's too much, but see how it kind of... It, it's Okay, it's too much, but see, a little bit of it, the front can support a little bit of it to... Uh, to help lead you into that painting. And that's what's going to be the artistic choice. That's going to be up to you. I'm going to add a little light here. Go over that just a touch. There. And, uh, yeah, maybe a bit of lighter green. And I'm I gotta, I gotta go get me some new paints here. I'm almost out of the white here too. Maybe I have enough here. We'll see. We'll get some of that out. And some nice light yellow green. A few little vertical marks here to help it get the grasses. So you pull through like that. So I love to use the paper towel to give the impression of grasses. So I would put a line in there like that and just pull through. Give a, a bit of the vertical and see the, sh the shadow that I just put on. See how it gives it the look of the grasses, see? So I can pull on a line color and just pull through. And it'll give it the look of the grasses there, see? One of the things I love to do, and it just makes some soft ones. And you can use your brush as well. I use my brush as well to, to get some variation, some differences and stuff. You know, to... I love the combinations of the brushes and the, and the, uh, the knife and the paper towel. To get that, those very, those different looks here. That's a bit too much there. So what, what I can do, let me just show you, is sometimes I'll take just my brush with a little bit of water and soften through and take, I don't want to take it out completely, but just soften through some of that. See, that'll give you a nice, that little mark there is a bit distracting. You can take it out with shadow or just take it out like I'm doing right now. Both will work. Let's grab a little more white. Grab some of that right here. You can, you know, you, like I say, you can use your brush or just use a paper towel like I like to. The paper towels are great little brushes and you can go get a new one pretty easy. You can blur them out to soften something if it looks like it's too much, you know. Just a little corner edge there. You can wipe your knife like this, push down to flatten it out, which will soften it out there. And, uh, and it's up to you how much you're going to do. Let's get a bit more yellow over here. Some of this light. And maybe uh, some of this softer path color again. See, I'll repeat them several times to, you know, back and forth and slide it like this. And it'll take out some of the grass, but it, it just, as I keep doing this, it keeps... Uh, building the idea of the path and that's what I'm doing here the softer path a little bit of green 
there. Softer green right here, maybe. There we go. Softer little green right here. There we go. Yeah, now, in the photo, there's fences and stuff up through here. So you have to kind of decide, yeah, you're going to do a fence. You know, maybe a light tan. Beautiful tan is green and burnt sienna. Here, a little more burnt sienna here. And then a little yellow and some white. Here, makes just really nice light tan colors here. And um, get a fresh paper towel here. And, you know, so, I mean, do we want to put a fence? We can put it in pretty easy. If you're not sure, let it dry. You know, or, or just do like I do. Just go for it. Kind of draw in the idea of a fence line here. It's got to go a lot lighter. And I love the color to be modeled, so it comes off different here. There we go. Let's put in a couple of, ra a couple of the rails here. Maybe one more. Try to and see it's very much very casual here. Let's uh, touch in a bit of the light. Pull in the posts. Just pull it across here. And then you'll have your shadow. There. And you can blur it, soften it out, take your brush. You know, this is where I would come in. Let me clean this brush out real well with water. Small little brush, okay? And you can run it right over their edges there and soften the color exchange between that light and shadow. Correct anything that you want to correct. That water will help pull it a little bit more. Give you a, a little different look to it. But I like it to, I don't like it to be too perfect. So I like it to have some variation, some lights and some darks and stuff to it as I go to paint those. And suggestive that's the biggest thing I think more than anything else that it gets suggestive which means we're definitely not going to get perfect here let's take a little bit of dark here and create some also some dark shadows around it maybe just pull through the fence a bit blur it up break it up add a little bit of green through it you can uh, continue it on now in the um, reference photo it goes pretty much across here so maybe I do maybe I maybe uh, the reference photo it bends down here maybe that's too perfect so I just blur it off so it's not quite so perfect there we go let's just try this with the so it's not always the you know it's not oh I don't always use the knife I like the brush flat as well and see and I can go back with the knife a little bit of yellow and light and you know touch the edges of it or pull but you can touch the edges of it to create uh, little shines here so you know to just set the edges down and just touch and create little shines there 
for that fence. There. Maybe there's one rail missing here. There on that fence. And you don't have to see the whole thing perfect. That's the that's the part that used to I used to always like, oh you gotta have the front, I mean the the sides and everything's gotta be perfect and no it doesn't. Let's take a little green. Bury the fence in some bushes here. Yeah, that's kind of nice. You could carry it along over there, you know, there's just some, you know, maybe you have a few little ideas of it. Just marks of it over here, like little ideas of a, a fence back up over here. Not a perfect one, remember it's an older, barn so maybe some of this is just going away there back there you know just fading away and stuff fun stuff fun fun stuff so and you know in just a couple hours here see I can push in a little bit more light a few little sparks of stuff little grasses little sparks you know, look at this as it starts to dry down. What more do you want to do to it? You know, do you want to carry some of those greens like right up over here? Use up, it's what I like to do, use up some of my palette colors. But I think that draws in pretty well here. Use a few little sparks of some of that green here. That's not too bad. There you guys go. So it gives you an idea. So we're painting it with that. Uh, and it looks pretty good <laughs> compared to that one here. But you could do a little more work. You could put a little more highlight across there. How much more you put in. Like I could put in a bit more of a shine right, right there on that fence. Just the edge of the knife. So you're just thinking shines. Little, little shines of light there hitting that. You can correct it all up, do what you want to do with it. But it's a really kind of a fun technique. So we leave this, as opposed to some of my other landscapes, you leave this just kind of underpainted, and you pull the viewer in to the painting. And you can even pull them in a little bit more, a little bit more dark. You can look at the painting and see it's that dark, how much more dark you want to put up in there, okay? That's all up to you. Do you want to put some more dark in there? Pull that forward. You could put an old truck in there, an old tractor in there. That would look great as well. The one that uh, that person that's interested in this painting wants just the barn, so that's where I'm just going to leave it. But an old truck, a tractor, you can put a little horse in there. All of that is just good stuff for you to do, okay? All right. So one of the other things that I'm going to do to help you guys with color theory is over the course of the next month, I'm going to do a couple of these videos, short little videos each week. And we're, not, we're going to continue our painting studies, but I want to do color theory studies to show you like how to lead in, how to make some of these tones. What's warm? What's cool? How do you know all these questions? You know, all these things. And what I want you to do is just drop right below any of the videos at any time and start asking some questions. If you don't, if there's something about color that you don't understand, and then I'll answer your questions in the videos here as we put them all up here. So I want to do a couple of these every week uh, throughout the winter time here. So that we're working together and get everyone understanding color theory, okay? Also, uh, those of you that are looking for the paintings, we have our big gallery sale. Uh, that's the benefit for our foundation that actually provides this channel for us, does everything for free for you guys. That uh, big gallery sale benefit, I'll put a link to it below in, in the, uh, or over in the, uh, the description of the video. It starts November 6th, on November 6th. Um, also, if you would, if those of you that like to collect a painting of mine, um, go watch the community page, just right up underneath the front of our page. Down there you'll see the community page, watch it, I'll put the link for uh, the uh, the benefit sale. It's over on the jansenartgallery.com. 
but it starts November 6th. So you won't see the link till November 6th. And uh, we would appreciate your support. If you want to collect a painting, that's where you got it. They'll be there at good prices, and they, everything benefits. Everything is it benefits the uh, free classes we do here and scholarships and stuff like that. It keeps everything we do for free, okay? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Give it a try. This will make a small, nice little painting as well. Give it a try. Maybe a horse, okay? All right. Ask those color questions down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one.